Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for joining us, um, our 152nd Avenue virtual open house. And before we get started, I do want to go over some key items. Um, this is a recorded meeting. We'll not be recording any of the cameras or chats, but the presentation and the audio will be recorded. Um, we will be posting the recorded presentation on our project website by next Tuesday. So here in a couple of business days. Um, once the presentation has concluded, we will follow up with a question and answer session. So um, everyone will be muted during the entire presentation. And then during our question and answer session, you'll be able to raise your virtual hand and we'll go ahead and call on you and request that you unmute uh, yourself in order to ask um, questions. And then we do have a slide to help uh, familiarize yourself with the raise hand options. So if you um, go over to the participant list, you can find your name. You may need to hover a little bit, but there will be a hand symbol. Um, you can click on the hand in order to raise your virtual hand. Another way is to find the reaction button at the bottom of the lower right hand corner of your screen. Um, again, you might need to scroll a little bit to find it, but um, it might be, uh, the button might be right next to that reaction, um, but there's a raise hand icon that will appear. So just go ahead and um, click on that to raise your virtual hand. And then if there are any participants that have joined just over the phone, you can go ahead and press star three to raise your virtual hand. Um, we do have a chat feature that is enabled. Um, so if you do think of a question during the presentation, you can go ahead and type it up, send it through. We'll either answer it um, on the chat or we'll read it out loud during our question and answer session. We do have several uh, Clark County Public Works team members here that will be able to answer those questions. Um, we did schedule this meeting from five to six, so um, we do want to be considerate of everyone's time, so we will adhere to that time frame. Um, we won't go past that six o'clock mark. Um, if there isn't enough participation or in, enough questions, then we can go ahead and end the, the meeting early. But, um, you know, we encourage all members to participate because this is your opportunity to talk to us. We will, um, I'll go ahead and post email addresses um, at the end of the presentation and then they'll also be available on our project website. Um, title six forms and a comment form will be email to everyone who is in attendance here in the next couple of days. Those are voluntary. So if you'd like to fill those out and return those to us, we would greatly appreciate it. So again, thank you for joining us today. And I will go ahead and pass it over to Troy, who is our project manager and will do the presentation today. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Again, my name is Troy Pierce. I'm the project manager for 152nd Avenue. Um, the project from Patton Parkway to Northeast uh, 99th Street. And um, I will be making the presentation. We do have several team members here um, and uh, they may they may have some um, answers to some of the questions that may arise or want to contribute at the end. And uh, I'll let them introduce themselves um, as that occurs. Um, I will get started. Um, with uh, project goals, why is this a project? Um, this project has um, several, uh, at least a federal grant. Um, and some of the goals that were stated in that is um, to provide safety uh, for all modes of transportation, especially at the intersections um, and uh, at York Elementary School, which is kind of halfway between um, the two endpoints of the project. Um, there are infrastructure conditions to meet current standards. The road, as you know, has is partially developed. There's sidewalk along some parts of it. There's um, other places where it's still a ditch. Um, I, most of the open land along it is developed now. There's a couple of subdivisions that have gone in recently um, in near across from York Elementary and then up near Northeast 96th Street. Um, part of the part of the um, goals is to uh, are to uh, provide multimodal access along the corridor. Um, again, that's uh, particularly you know obviously the vehicular act, um, use of the road, but also the pedestrian and bicycles. 
Um, system reliability, transit access, freight movement. Um, there are some, um, there is um, development or, or industrial and, and commercial development that's actually quite a bit to the, to the, or to the west on Northeast 99th Street um, that um, is, as it develops, potentially moving, moving to the, to the east. And uh, this is, provides an access for some of that freight if there's ever issues. Um, and then it's a network connectivity completion um, with the north-south connection between Patton and SR500 and Northeast 99th Street. Again, it's an unfinished corridor. So those are some of the goals um, that have gone into why this is a, is a project. Um, an overview, uh, the, the roadway classification, we have an arterial atlas um, at the county that uh, that classifies roadways. This is a C2B, which means it's a collector arterial. Um, it is an arterial, uh, which is a higher function, um, higher capacity, higher volume roadway. Um, it is the the third, the lowest um, capacity volume or volume, same word, capacity and volume of the arterial classifications, but it still is an arterial. It will have two travel lanes, um, one in each direction, as well as bike facilities. There will be, uh, we're planning a center left turn lane only at the southbound, um, for south for southbound traffic at the school's north entrance. So I don't know if my, if my cursor is visible um, or not, but it's kind of at the north end of the, uh, of the school there. And then we will be providing a pedestrian crossing. Um, there's one at the north end. We'll be moving that, removing that one that's currently there at the north end of the school to the south end of the school um, uh, at their south entrance, just, just to the north of their south entrance. So the vehicles will be encouraged, or, or actually most of the vehicles use the north entrance. And so they'll have a left turn lane into that, into that, and the pedestrians will be moved away from that action, vehicular action um, to the south. Um, and then there will be a new traffic signal at Northeast 99th Street and Northeast 152nd Avenue, where there will be a left turn leg on each leg. Um, we did consider a roundabout at that location, um, but it was discarded based on the uh, some of the development that's occurred already um, and, uh, and just essentially room. Um, project funding, again, as I mentioned, there are federal funds in this. Um, a, a block grant from the surface transportation program. Um, we are going to be seeking an additional grant from the transportation improvement board in August. And there are local funds um, involved as well. Traffic impact fees, which are, which are fees that come in from development as they're, um, as they're brought online for traffic impacts that they create. And, uh, so there's basically areas around the county that where they fall into a pool or, or a, an area, depending on on where their that development occurs, and then the the county road fund. Um, project costs, the estimated project costs for the whole thing that's nine is nine point one million. Um, that is including three phases of of a typical project: uh, preliminary engineering, right of way, and construction. Um, the, in, the preliminary engineering is obviously the de design phase um, where we have um, a number of engineering disciplines involved, roadway, stormwater, geotechnical, and traffic are those that are involved on this one. Um, and then that also includes uh, environmental um, documentation and permitting that's required for, for each project. Um, Right-of-way acquisition occurs where the um, where the roadway is moves beyond or the impacts are greater than what is existing. Um, and then construction obviously is the contract um, and the management of the, of, the, of the contract that goes into those costs. Uh, so what I would, will do is um, kind of walk through each of those phases and how they, how they relate to this project. Um, and uh, then I have a few, um, questions at the end that I've received already that I'll try and address. 
um, and then we'll have time for an up for a for a questions and answers or if there are any. So um, the roadway and the engineering for that um, generally a very flat um, profile um, out there. There's very little change. There will be very little change in that uh, in the rise and fall of that uh, of the road that's there. Um, we are looking to keep curb and gutter and sidewalk where we can. Um, it's not always possible um, based on maybe the age of it or how it's or the when it was constructed. Does it fit under the current standards or was it constructed to a previous standard? Um, and we also have to evaluate, um, you know, it's been kind of developed in a piecemeal fashion the, um, over the years, the roadway. And so there's some issues with um, the existing crown and slope of the road against what is standard. Um, for example, just looking at that, you know, when you think of a road, there's a crown in the middle typically, and then the road slopes to either side from that crown. And that generally has a standard that's around 2%, um, between 2 and 4%. Um, and in this case, there are some places where the road crown is at 6%. So we'll be looking to correct that. Um, and that means that sometimes that uh, curb and gutter that's existing will be at the wrong elevation and have to be have to be replaced. Um, stormwater uh, on this project is um, is all infiltration. There's no runoff to any streams. The soils in this area are um, are probably enough good enough that they'll let soil drain in or water drain down through them. Um, quickly enough to allow all of the runoff from the road to be uh, to be dissipated into the soil. Um, it will be uh, before it gets into that soil, it's treated um, or cleaned in catch basin filters. So those are located, and I didn't get a picture of those. I was going to and didn't then didn't, didn't. But uh, those are located actually in the uh, the catch basins themselves, where the water is is collected. Um, and then it's treated and, and drains into um, an infiltration trench that you see up in the right hand corner um, there with the uh, where the water will collect in there and then infiltrate into the uh, into the rock around it and into the soil around that. Um, and again, that rate has been tested and is should is uh, is drains quickly enough to uh, to allow that to be the method of treatment for stormwater on this on this roadway. Um, it doesn't happen frequently where that's the case, but uh, it is on this project. So that actually makes it kind of nice too in terms of permitting where infiltration is the is the recommended method for uh, for a permit so we avoid getting into into streams. Um, so geotechnical engineering that was like I mentioned um, one of the we have a consultant has that has done this for us or is doing this for us, and they test the soils um, and determine how fast the the water can drain into that. They also have been doing a pavement report, a study of existing pavement conditions, um, and making recommended improvements. Again, as as we've noted, the, the the roadway has developed piecemeal over the years, and so looking at at the different segments of road and, and they did a number of, of tests along the roadway. You may have seen them out there. Um, boy, it might've been, I'm not sure when it was now, it's been some time, some months, but uh, there were, um, they were out there doing some, some tests um, to determine what kind of um, replacement and repair we needed to do for the, uh, for the, um, the roadway and you kind of see just an example of their work in the lower left the, the aerial photo um, where they've created a map for us where for red areas for instance and this is preliminary um, red areas for instance would be a full replacement where you, you dig down the road all the way down to the to the dirt below basically and then put rock and and uh um, build it back up with rock and pavement. Um, other places, uh, like in the yellow areas, where we probably um, it's still strong enough to get a to um, to just do a, a mill of the existing pavement and then leave the the rock and and subgrade alone. 
uh, and then put back in asphalt. Um, so mill and mill and 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 uh, inlay the uh, the existing asphalt. So it'll be a combination of different uh, different improvements there. Traffic um, is the other uh, the last engineering where there's a you know obviously we have signing um, and striping in particular. What what are the stripe? That's all designed um, with tapers and uh, um, different widths, and so that becomes part of what the traffic engineering does. Again, the left turn lane, we mentioned that. Um, the pedestrian crossing, I mentioned that at the south end of, of York Elementary. And then obviously they'll be designing the traffic signal system at uh, 99th Street and 152nd Avenue. Um, environmentally, um, the documentation and permitting process, um, we examine the project for cultural resources. Um, and uh, that's a two part really. There's a historic resource research where they look kind of at documentation and, and, and view what's there. How old is it? Um, is there anything that's been listed on any of the registers or lists that are kept from a state and national standpoint? Um, and then an archeological survey where they will um, Look at uh, areas that are open or or un undeveloped. Um, are there any places that and I'll touch base on this a little bit in a bit? Um, are there any areas that uh, may have um, actually survey or resources that are in the field that they discovered? Um, they do kind of a pedestrian survey, and I'll get into that. NEPA um, and SEPA; those are just you know acronyms that are requirements from these acts that you see there. Um, that we have to follow and uh, and document that we're not impacting, or if we are impacting, how are we mitigating them? Um, critical areas, wetlands, and habitat conservation. Again, this project it's fairly well developed. Um, it's dry. We're infiltrating. There's not a lot of, if any, um, it's minor of of critical areas that uh, are along this project. So. We're hoping, or I'm hoping, that uh, the permitting will be a, uh, a simpler process on this project. It's a, it's a, a uh, not often the case that that happens. It's often very complicated getting through the environmental process. Um, again, I mentioned the archaeological survey part. Um, one of those elements is a pedestrian archaeological archaeology survey. Uh, again, that's for adjacent areas that are open spaces or without constructed frontage are the most likely to be selected. Uh, and what that consists of is is doing a shovel test pit. Um, uh, 20 inches in diameter at the surface and then 20 inches uh, minimum depth and uh, and then excavating screening that excavated soil and uh, then replacing it and, lo and logging any findings. Um, so it's really kind of a creating some kind of a grid or methodology to examine those open spaces or um, areas that may be potential. Uh, again, with this projects, a lot of it has got uh, sidewalk already um, in place. So it's limited in those areas um, um, where those areas will be, but um, that's the archeological survey. Uh, and then right of way, um, my involvement, um, um, the right of way plans we we uh, are prepared to reflect impacts um, to the project, and those are completed between the 65 and 90 percent plans. And I'll touch base on those in the schedule about when that is. Um, and then I want to turn it over to um, our real property services um, manager, Laura Sly, who will kind of talk you through the um the process for how acquisition works laura good evening um so my name is laura henry sly i am the real property services manager for clark county and one of our main tasks for um moving forward is that we identify private property for a public purpose and once we know, once the design is along far enough that we will, that's when we, that's when my department kicks in and um, we will send you a letter, let you know, hey, we're coming, 
we have a project, and most of you already know that we have a project. Uh, we hire a an appraiser. Uh, we stake the right of way. Well, the existing right of way was out there today, and um, the slivers of land and the strips of land that we're going to be needing for this project uh, to be able to widen that footprint of that project. We hire uh, appraisers who do not work for the government. They have their own independent businesses. We hire them in an effort to make a very independent um, valuation. Our goal is always to um, make sure that the that the offer that we give you is the uh, reflects their current market conditions. Uh, once that appraisal process is done, then we um, hire that to, uh, we hire an additional appraiser to evaluate that appraisal to make sure that the math is is correct, that the methodology used in that appraisal process was um, addressed, and uh, then there we scrutinize that internally here to make sure um, that 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 the offer that we're going to give you is uh, the best that we can possibly give you uh, within the constraints of the law and um, you will be given a copy of that report um, someone from my staff will be making appointments with you and um, they will sit down and at that point they'll tell you exactly what we're doing They'll give you the construction plans. They'll give you the right of way plans. They'll give you a copy of the of the report, and um, should probably have just about every or all of your answers question or answered by the time um, one of my staff members show up. Um, there is a, in the state of Washington, um, you have a statutory allowance of seven hundred and fifty dollars to have to. Uh, take the government's report and have anybody of your choosing to take a look at it to confirm that we've done our due diligence. And that could be an, a, that can be an additional appraisal or appraiser to make sure, you know, um, we've done our due diligence. That can be uh, oftentimes people hire attorneys to look at all the documentation to make sure, hey, am I signing what I think I am signing? So there's a lot of um, um, a, a lot of work ahead of time before we show up. So that's pretty much it. Um, one of the most common questions people go ask is when is payment made? Well, payments made, as soon as you sign, we start processing that payment immediately because uh, uh, possession is upon payment. And so we don't delay until construction. We would get that payment out to you as soon as we can. So that, and I'm available um, to, answering specific questions. That's kind of like a really high, fast version of what we do. Thank you, Laura. Um, that is, uh, again, an uh, overview of the of the right of way process. And then obviously after that is completed and the, and the design is completed, we move into the construction of the, um, of the project. And so we are currently yeah, planning to construct this under traffic. Um, there's a lot of traffic that comes through here, so um, we're not proposing at this point a long term detour uh, where a road closure is proposed. Um, we may reconsider that as the design advances, but we have to keep in mind that the access there, the school is there. Um, there may be some good um, alternatives around this, but uh, it uh, we're not currently planning that. Um, um, again, we are about at the, uh, at the 50 percent level, so there's some ways to go in the design. Uh, we may again consider some things, but uh, um, we're not certain at this point, not planning it at this point. Uh, that does not mean, though, that there would not be some possible temporary detours. Um, when you look at this graph near where the project is, you know, there are some blocks that may need to go around um the, a different way depending on what's happening in the roadway right in front of them um that would be um probably accomplished with flaggers maybe some signing um but again that's uh um undetermined at this point um and then there there may be um and likely some temporary closures during the actual construction if it's under traffic um, those can be up to 20 minutes 
Um, and again, that's with flaggers where they need to do some work that's in the roadway or um, the construction gets down to one lane of traffic in each direction. And so traffic lines up um, and travels back and forth on one lane um, with, with flagger control. Um, staging is, uh, is an, an open area staging. The word means it's an open area that we need for construction contractors, equipment and materials. They have to be able to put that stuff somewhere. Um, it's difficult to find these places along developed roads, um, but what we want, we hope to do is permit several potential options. That means that they're vetted for archeological and uh, other critical areas. They're basically permitted as, as a part of the project, even though they're not, um, they're, they're not an acquisition or they're not a, um, a portion that uh, we use if, if it doesn't work out, uh, but it is permitted and that gives the contractor some, some av availability or freedom um, at that point. Uh, so again, there's several areas we hope to, to permit that way, but it ultimately um, is up to the property owner and the contractor. Um, we've gone through and vetted it uh, environmentally, but it will be up to the up to that property owner and the contractor to for the contractor to approach the property owner and what happens then if it's if there's an agreement um, or if it's acceptable to the property owner. There's a third party agreement that is developed between the um, the property owner and the contractor that the county is not a part of, but we get assigned off, you know, that the property owner is, is content and that everything's occurred and, and uh, whether there was work to be done or a payment that's between the property owner and the contractor, we just get a, a, a sign off that it's, that it's finished. Um, so there are a couple of, of um, just to point that out, some areas that we've been kind of considering uh, that are open areas near the project. Um, if um, that are potential options, uh, if you own this or or have an, or have property, other property that might be might have an interest um, in providing that for the contractor, uh, please let me know. Or if you see your parcel here, um, um, let me know as well. And uh, interest or no interest, <laughs> we're just that's one of the things that we're we're seeking our staging areas for the contractor during the project area. So we've taken a, a, a an early stab at it and uh, we'll be um, interested in any any input that the public may have regarding this. Um, schedule for the uh, for the project um, is uh, obviously things happen and things change. But what we have now um, are intending to do, we have obviously the open house today. Um, our permit plans uh, are, are due in the middle of August. Um, one of the things that is part of that is that cultural resource investigation. So those who are alongside the property or who may have open areas or um, on that list for, uh, for staging areas, um, will be sending letters. Um, to you and uh, informing you of kind of what the process is and I'll touch base on it. Um, actually, I, like I did, it's just kind of information with the, this is what to anticipate with the shovel pits and uh, and to let us know if you have, have concerns with that. And then in the 90% plans um, due at the end of this year, that's uh, when the right of way plans are completed. We've kind of start that process between those two as I mentioned before. Um, and then we anticipate the acquisition, the right of way acquisition, the appraisals and the offers and that process occurring um, between March of 23 and March of 24 uh, is when Laura's group would be, would be mailing and contacting any, any um, property owners along the project um, where the yeah, acquisition is required. Uh, we're looking at potentially a second open house when that process is completed. Um, uh, and then in, in April of 2024, um, again, these dates are subject to change, but the broad picture is where we're kind of headed with, with a bid opening um, in the fall of 2024. We'll spend that time between the end of right of way and um, bid opening, um, obtaining 
and securing of obligating the construction, federal construction funding and uh, advertising the project. Um, and then we anticipate construction would be um, mostly in this in the year of 2025. Um, sometimes with a bid opening in the fall, if the soil is if, is um, conducive to it, and this site is actually could be um, has a greater chance of it than other sites where it um, there's work that can be done in wet weather. Um, uh, that's mostly up to the contractor. So I'm I'm pointing that out in the because um, occasionally the work could start sooner than April, but typically it's an April um, around April start um, for construction. I did receive a couple of questions um, already. Some um, there were uh, some several pointed out there was a they had the, a different. Um, name on their on their their envelope than the than the address um, or parcel number there was there was an administrative error that that mixed the names and parcel numbers with the addresses so um, that uh, several of the uh, of, of members of the public pointed that out and uh, let me know and and uh, did look into that. It does not affect any parcel data in the county system, I, for example, taxing purposes, um, but it did occur with pulling those addresses and uh, and setting this, this mailing up. Um, so thank you to those who um, pointed that out. And uh, um, it actually was thrilling to staff that, uh, some staff that is like, hey, good people are reading this. <laughs> So thanks again for pointing that out. It was doesn't affect anything beyond the mailing for this project. Um, I did get several questions about cut through traffic on Northeast 150th Avenue. Um, I don't know if you can see the cursor or not, but it's the roadway that runs parallel to 152nd Avenue to the west of uh, of of um, it's to the west of 157 to the yeah of 152nd Avenue. Um, and, uh, I did forward that to our traffic group, um, and I got a good response and I will also send their response to, uh, or at least portions of it, um, in, as an answer to some of the emails that I received, but, um, again, 99th and 152nd Avenue, it's currently an all way stop. Um, and I don't know if there's cut through traffic that occurs now, uh, because of that all way stop, but. Typically, what our traffic section pointed out is that um, the traffic signal will actually handle intersection traffic far better than an all-way stop can. So, if there is cut through traffic now because of of lined up set lineups at that uh, at the all-way stop, it should um, be uh, more efficiently handled by the traffic signal. Um, this was a fully actuated traffic signal, which means that it's not being coordinated with anything else. Um, it stands alone, so traffic um, that triggers it, um, it doesn't have to wait for any, like, if you go along a corridor or anywhere in the, in the county, if they're coordinated, um, you may sit there for a while, even though the light is, um, the, even though there's no traffic in the other direction, because that's a part of the coordination. Um, so it, we anticipate that the, the need for that will not be there, um, because the, the signal should operate, um, so, uh, much more efficiently than a, than a always stop. Um, saying that, um, what the traffic section proposed was to do a, to gather traffic count information on 152nd Avenue. Um, <clears throat> this fall in September or October after school starts again, so that we have a baseline um, of what traffic is now. And uh, then we can compare that to what may occur after um, the uh, after the project is implemented. So or, or, or completed and we have some time to uh, to see what might the, the impacts might be and, and monitor that. So we will have um, some baseline information to compare that to. So again, thank you for pointing that out. 
um, for those who, who sent that question. Um, it is something that we will will um, get some baseline data for and continue to monitor uh, as the project moves forward and is completed. Uh, and then I got uh, several questions about, or a question about safety measures at, at York Elementary for pedestrians. Is a flashing light going to be going to be installed? And again, um, we will be moving the crosswalk down to the south end of York Elementary, um, away from some of the traffic um, um, congestion that occurs at the at the north end. There is not a flashing light currently um, warranted. Uh, there, is, there are some processes and measures and elements that, that are uh, reviewed for that installation of a traffic light. And this, this location does not meet those at this point. Um, so with the project, um, it's not uh, intended to, uh, to be constructed. It would just be um, signage, passive signage. Here is my contact information. Um, if you have questions or concerns, some of you have emailed me already um, and uh, feel free to, to contact me and if you have questions about the project. Um, and there's also a general communications um, web or, uh, or address that uh, you, could, you can send that to as well um, and it will, it will be uh, forwarded to me. Thank you for attending. Um, and I will turn it back over to Cindy to see if any questions came in or if you have any questions of me or of staff that are present. So thank you. All right, thank you, Troy, for that presentation. So as I mentioned previously, um, everyone is currently muted, but um, if you can find your virtual um, or your hand, your little uh, raise hand option, you're more than welcome to raise your virtual hand and then we'll go ahead and call on you and um, let you go ahead and ask those questions to our group. And I do see that there are a couple people that are that joined in over the phone. You can press star three on your phone and that will also get you to um, raise your virtual hand. So um, have one calling user and Go ahead. Should have gotten a request to unmute. There you go. Oh? Yep, go ahead. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So, if, if, um, I'm sorry, I'm listening instruction from the meeting again oh. as well. Um, so my question is that uh, we received the letter. We are in 99th and 156th. And my understanding is that it's going to be northeast 152nd all the way until 99th. So why we why we did receive the letter if nothing is going to happen in next to our property? I mean, in the sidewalk or or I don't know where I can see. I'm, I'm joining for the phone because I couldn't join the WebEx uh, thing. I, okay. I wonder where can I see the map of the of, of it seems that it's not going to be my property or property is not going to be affected. So yeah, if you're, on, sure. if you're yeah, if you're on 156th Avenue, um, then you're correct. No, what no, we no, typically yeah. yeah. Is that where you are, 99th and 156th Avenue? Uh, 90, uh, 166, it's a street, I guess. Um, this is not an avenue, it's a street. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused on where you are exactly, but typically what we do is yeah. we send these mails, mailers out to about a half mile radius of the project um, because uh, there's a there's a good chance that if you drive 152nd Avenue, you'll be impacted by the construction when it when it occurs. Mm. And so it's just to let people um, in the in the neighborhood know that a project is coming to their neighborhood. Um, and so it doesn't mean mm. necessarily that everybody who got this is going to be, you know, the, the project is not right in front of their in front of their house, but it, it is kind of in their neighborhood. So that's the that was the purpose of the of the mailer to just 
a half mile around the project and to let people know that this is a project we're working on um, and it will be coming um, to, in your, to your area in the next few years. Okay, if I email you, would you send the map just to be super sure? Yes. You send yes. The, 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 okay. So your email is, is Troy, right? Or yes. Troy there's, dot there's the, okay. Yeah, there's the email, and, and there there okay. should be, and I don't know what's on the on the website now, but we'll be updating the website with this presentation, and uh, and the maps that we have some some uh, information that way. So yeah, we should you should be able to see where that where that falls. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, and I don't see any other virtual hands raised, so maybe I'll just give it a few minutes. Um, or actually. So star three if you're on the phone or look for the virtual uh, for the hand raise signal option at the bottom of your screen or on next to your name on the participant lists. Or if you have your camera on, go ahead and raise your hand and I can see. Hey Cindy, this is Laura Hogett. Yeah. And I do see a question in the chat. From Chelsea? Yes. I can't see that. I didn't. I saw something go by, but I don't see it anymore. And I didn't. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure if that was a question for for everyone or or not. Um, but it says, has any thought been given to adding um, a crosswalk at Northeast 85th Street? There's a park that is accessed by crossing 152nd as well as one of the bus stops along 152nd Avenue. And. I'm wondering if that is Otto Brown Park, and it's quite a ways from the project, but um, we could certainly submit that question to someone, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think just as a, typically what will occur is um, at a at a public road, um, there's a there's a crosswalk there, and that's why we build ramps. We 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 tend to stay away from um striping a crossing uh when unless there's a specific need for it uh so like at at like at a signal obviously we stripe the crosswalks um at every public road we do not but there is a there's a kind of a de facto crossing there um it, it, uh, the the cross the crosswalk that we're talking about for the pedestrians and for students at the elementary school would be a mid block crossing, which is not um, something that we we put in frequently, but they, they do occur and do exist. Um, mostly because traffic is, you know, it's kind of the rule of the road that at a, at an intersection you could have pedestrians crossing there, and uh, so there will be there will be a crossing at um, at all of the inter public intersections, but they will not necessarily be striped. I have Thank some you. more information on this. Uh, my name is Jess Thorne. I'm the traffic or no, I'm the roadway engineer on this project. I just pulled up the map of uh, 85th Street. One of the things that is going to happen there is the ramps are not currently up to ADA standards. So um, I believe three of those four ramps will be taken out and replaced with ones that uh, have more ADA accessibility. So there will be improvements at that location uh, specifically for pedestrian crossing. And then, okay, great. Sounds like you answered the question because she was also asking if she said it's Tiger Tree Park. There's a lot of foot traffic at that location. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Right, it's very busy there. So the, the new ramps will be great. Thank you. And then I'm going to go ahead and move to Rod first, and then we'll go back to Mackenzie. Make 
should be able to unmute. So. No, it sends a, it's a, it sends a little um, a request for you to unmute your talk. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Um, I just wanted to weigh in on the 85th as well. I, I live just a block off of that and cross 152nd on foot frequently, and it's pretty dangerous. People don't stop. And perhaps the new traffic light up at 99th will help break it up a little. It's also dangerous pulling out. So anyway, appreciate the project. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then I have um, Mackenzie's question on the chat. Is there an option to have a flashing light across crosswalk at the school intersection at York Elementary? Um, again, I think those are um... Those installations have a, have a series of um, of steps that they go through to determine what kind of treatment they're going to get, and uh, this one doesn't warrant a stop uh, or a flashing light at this point. Um, I think we'll we'll look at that again as we uh, as we move forward. But it's at this point, I think it's a signed signed only is what we have in the scope. Um, as well as lighting, Troy. Um, for yes, the illumination. Illumination. Thank you. I'll give it a few moments. Okay, Gary, go ahead. So I got here late, so if this has already been answered. Um, how do you determine, I mean, I know they put out those things to see how much traffic goes through and so forth, but I've lived in this area for nearly 30 years and the corner that you're actually talking about putting this light on in my family is called the accident corner because since I've been here, it is constantly, a summer doesn't go by, a season doesn't go by. And there is in some kind of an accident, sometimes fatality, some, it's just not, and so I'm curious, exactly what measures determine this because as i'm listening to the people who live in this neighborhood who are asking specific questions about crossing and so forth we see something that it appears to me doesn't come up with the the standard testing and we we just see more accidents somebody just mentioned you can't barely cross the street because of the traffic and so forth so and then when you say well we don't do that because we haven't tested it yet how, how do you get feedback from us that says you know we don't need a test, we've seen it happen. Does that come into play at all? So you're, um, so I think the 85th, um, you know, this is good information. I don't know, are, when you're talking about the accident corner, which one were you talking about? Were you talking about 99th? Not, not 99th and 152nd. Um, when it used to be five acres, it's now a housing development, but when it used to be five acres, we were the last house in the, pre the previous development and you could hear the skid before the crash. And so we jokingly started calling it the accident corner because the way it is set up presently now, which is great that we're putting a light in, but over the 28 years that I've lived here, it's constantly under every re revision. You know, it does have a lot of interchanges for accidents, but as we built York into it, as we built more housing developments into it, it seems like traffic is always behind the progress that's happening. And, you know, now we have, we're sitting at this meeting and I hear people say, what about a light here? What about this? What about that? Because we every day get to face this, these street intersections. So I'm just curious, you know, did I miss the explanation of how we determine, you know, is it five accidents that then we just determined to look at something? What's that? And how does our input actually affect this this final change? For sure. People? And I love the change, by the way. I think that's great. But I happen to also live on 150th and 
you know, I hope we don't have people speeding down, which we already do have, by the way. People love to use us as the quick exit out. So. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I mean, that's, you, you've asked a number of questions, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, in typically accidents are, uh, and I'm talking not just about this project now, or this was the, um, accidents are, are, um, are tracked, you know, they, they're accident reports and, uh, they go through the sheriff's office and, and, you know, you, we kind of get that kind of data available of what's on what's available on, or what's occurred at, um, at intersections. If it's not reported or if there's no, if there's no, um, report, uh, you know, then that, that accident data is, is difficult to come by. Um, but that's one method. Um, another one is, is, um, in terms of speeds or, or volumes of traffic, um, you've seen the, the hoses down across the roads. Um, those are, are ways to count traffic and see what's, what is the, um, what are the volumes? How has that changed? Has it increased? Um, you know, that's, that's another method that, that occurs. Um, um, you know, you mentioned, I, I think the input that we're getting tonight, even on 85th street is one that I have not been aware of. Um, and it's something that we can continue to, to review and monitor as we look at the, at the project as we go. Um, the, uh, I'm not exactly sure what goes into those, into those warrants about how we determine, um, a, uh, you know, whether a, what what type of crossing is, is warranted at a, at a location, but it does have to do with, um, the number of, the number of homes in the area and the, you know, the development that has occurred. And that would be, a a, a traffic engineering question. I, I could look into that more. Um, but, uh, those are some of the things that, that, uh, do occur and, and feedback like we're getting on 85th. Is there a specific draw? Is there a, um, a, an, a place that is not that we're not aware of, or that is occurring, um, those can be pulled into the into the design of the project and, and evaluated as we uh, continue the design. Does that answer your question? It does. It helps me understand it a little bit more. I, 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 oh, yeah. sorry. I have a bit more to add. Um, it's not my specialty, but there is a transportation improvement plan called the TIP for the entire county. And it has uh, people that take that crash information and that volume data, and they're running um, projections and models and looking at in 20 years, where's the traffic going to be? Because there's only a certain amount of money, including grants and everything that the county has to uh, look at. And then mm -hmm. generally we follow the transportation improvement plan in order as the people who specialize it are doing it to put these projects. So they flagged 152nd for improvement. We're now working on it. We're learning the things as people are discussing them. For example, for 82nd, 85th Street, I'll be looking into the site triangles to make sure there's actually visibility on both sides now that I've heard that it's a problem for pedestrians crossing. So uh, it's something that we rely both on that crash information and everything as well as people uh, letting the county know where there are problems because we don't necessarily know. Okay, so then I guess that would be my next question. For us as neighbors that are living here, what is the best or who is the best source I'm, to send things that we experience, you know, like 85th Street or 150th, those kinds of comments to get them to be considered as, as I mean, and I do understand that we can only do so many things in the county, but at least to know that we can, you know, share a thought or at least have it looked into. Um, yeah, there's probably a number of ways to do that. But there, we we have a traffic engineering section that takes a lot of those kinds of things, traffic related, and and um, you know, it's varied over the years. But there are a number of lists internally in public works that that 
that people um, that the traffic section manages in terms of um, there's an issue with this crossing or an issue at that location, and they'll they manage those or or rank those and kind of take off the the top. And so, um, you know, there's a there's a general public works. Well, you know, even that number that is out on the on the screen right now, public works outreach, um, is a place to go. There's also a number for and I can drawing a blank two two four four six. Um, two four four six. Um, yeah, there's for, but I don't want to interrupt, but I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah, no, I just go ahead. Put it on, on the on the website. We do also have um uh it's report a, a road. And you know any community member can submit a concern. It can be it, they vary. It can be potholes. It could be um, something on the road. But these type of concerns can also be submitted um, through that link, um, and they're tracked. So it goes to our customer service team. They direct it to the correct department, but it's it's logged and it's tracked. So. If it's something that's sent to our transportation team, they they forward those questions on and ensure that they get followed up and addressed. So whether we're able to make a change or not, um, we we do respond to to those concerns, um, and you know we we are reading we are reading those. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are those the only questions from Carrie? I, th I think that covers okay. the baseline now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I had, there was a comment here from Robert saying that even when we use current crosswalk at the school, at the school, cars rarely stop to let us cross ones that do are the exception. So another, another comment on that crosswalk. Um, Mackenzie has a question. Um, are there plans? interventions to restrict through travelers from using res residential streets to avoid the stoplight for example using 150th and 9th street yeah we um mentioned that briefly um where typically what we've found is that the the use or the a signal will will manage traffic better than a a four way stop, which is there currently. So, um, we anticipate that the, the use of the cut through because of the signal will not, will not increase because of the signal. Um, what we can do or what we're proposing to do, um, and why I, I, I ran this question through traffic, our traffic section is, was to count what is using that road 150th in particular before the project. Um, probably this fall when school has started again, so we get kind of a, a better, a better baseline of what standard or normal is. Um, and then we have that information to, um, compare to what happens after the, uh, the signals in is, um, is installed. Thank you. I don't have any other questions or any other hands, so I'll leave it a few more minutes or a few more seconds. Any other last minute questions before we wrap up our meeting today? Just briefly, Cindy, oh, the, yeah. the re report a road link. I, I didn't catch mm -hmm. where you said you put that. Oh, I put it in the in the chat. I don't think that you can see okay. it because <laughs> your screen is being shared, but yeah, um, it's okay. clark.y.gov and then forward slash public. And Laura was also kind enough to link the tip if you're interested yes. in what the Clark County Transportation Plan includes. Um, there's another comment from Robert. During school, the traffic from the school uses 94th Street to cut out, to cut through to 150th, like a race track. Yeah, that's another traffic question and the, the traffic engineer I worked with um, on the project initially is not is not at the county any longer. But one of the things that he indicated was that 
um, we, you know, we, we've observed the cut through traffic, the traffic that turns right out of the school and and uh, moves around through the neighborhood and the installation of the of the left turn lane and then moving the um, crosswalk to the south end instead of there at the north end um, are are elements that hopefully will um, reduce, if not eliminate that uh, that use of the of the neighborhood for the school traffic. Um, it may not be a perfect solution, but that's hopefully um, it assists that makes makes traffic using that, especially that north um, uh, entrance to the school a little more functional. Thank you. All right. Well, um, sorry, we Laura, I just uh, Troy, this is this projects on the website as well. If people wanted to look at more information, is that right? And is that under public works? And then they would just click on current projects. Is that how they would find this project? Yeah, so you I would have to look Cindy yeah. made no. Yeah. Um on on our website click clerk on clerk dot y dot gov and then forward slash public dash works. And then there's quick links on the right hand corner. Um there's projects on there. And we have um a list of several projects uh, that are coming up. I'm not sure if this one's on here, but I can definitely add it oh um today. Um, and then, otherwise, it's also on the mailer that was received. Um, or just look up 150 seconds should be able to to come up. On just by searching it 150 second. Um, but yes, the presentation will be this PowerPoint presentation will be posted on our project website here in the next couple of days and then also the recording of the presentation and then I will also reach out to. Everyone who joined us today um, with some forms, if you'd like to fill those out for us. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And let me go back to. So um, I don't have any other comments on the chat, and then we are also past the six o'clock mark. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and thank everyone for joining us, and thank um, not only our participants but also. Um, our Clark County staff that were, were here with us today and Troy for presenting. And you will hear from me in the next couple of days. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cindy.